Hello everyone, I'm Zixuan Ma from Tsinghua University. I'm going to introduce our work, Efficiently Emulating High Bitwidth Computation with Low Bitwidth Hardware. In recent years, domain specific accelerators have developed rapidly. DIC can provide higher performance by mining the computation patterns of specific domains. For example, some DSAs are targeting the machine learning domain, such as NVIDIA Tensor Core, Google TPU, and Huawei ASIN processors. These DSAs can provide extremely high performance. However, due to their design purpose, these DSAs can only support specific types. Some common types, such as FP32 and FP64, are not widely supported by these accelerators. The absence of these types limits the application of these accelerators. We take NVIDIA Tesla A100 as an example. A100 provides a general-purpose computing unit, CUDA core, and a domain-specific computing unit, Tensor Core. Both of them support different types of combinations. The table on the right shows their peak performance. We can see that Tensor Core can obviously provide higher performance than CUDA Core, but the types are limited. For example, the FP32 type is a widely used floating point type, which is widely used in scientific computing, machine learning, and other fields. This data type lacks the support of Tensor Core. Therefore, when the users want to use FP32, they must use CUDA Core or use FP64 on the Tensor Core instead. Other types on other hardware have similar problems. So is there an opportunity to use low bitwidth data type such as FP16 to compute high bitwidth data types? To using low bitwidth data types to emulate a high bitwidth computation, there comes two major challenges. The first challenge is how to emulate a high bitwidth data type or how to design emulated data types. The main difficulty with emulated data types are representation range and precision, which affects the availability and accuracy for applications. The second challenge is how to use these types, or how to choose a proper data type for applications. We have to guarantee the end-to-end -end correctness without overflow or accuracy loss, and achieve higher performance as we can. To address these challenges, we propose two major contributions. To meet the challenge of emulating high bitwidth data types, we propose the emulator. It provides different emulated data types. Our data type can achieve a larger representation range, higher precision, and higher performance. These are guaranteed by our numerical analysts. And to meet the challenge of selecting a proper data type, we propose the adapter. It can dynamically choose a data type for specific inputs and generate a computation schedule with a fine granularity and automatically choose a proper computation strategy. After that, our system will generate efficient code. Here is the overview of our system. We call it APE. APE is designed as a data type emulator and performance booster. The emulator will provide various emulated data types and will use native data types and emulated data types with similar precision. For specific computation, APE will first partition it into blocks and decide the data type for each input block. Then the adapter will generate computation strategies and choose the best one. Finally, according to the strategy, APE will generate efficient codes. By this process, APE can use a low bitwidth data type to emulate a high bitwidth computation in a real-world application. I will first introduce the native floating point types in supported by NVIDIA A100. FP32 is a common floating point type with 1 sign bit, 8 exponent bits, and 23 significant bits. The value of floating point number is calculated as follows. We can find that the exponent bits decide the representation range, and the, and the significant bits decide the precision. 
So FP32 has a large range and high precision. For other types such as FP16, it has only 5 exponent bits and 10 significant bits. It has both a narrower range and lower precision. For TF32 and BF16, they have 8 exponent bits, which means they have a similar range compared to FP32, but they have a lower precision. So, how can we use these low bitwidth types such as FP16, TF32, and BF16 to emulate a high bitwidth data type such as FP32? Here is a straightforward approach. For an FP32 value V, we can represent V with two FP16 numbers, VH and VL. Mathematically, V equals VH plus VL. We can find that because FP16 has only 5 exponent bits, so we can only have at most FP16 range. According to the emulation method, here the exponent bits of VL are equal to VH minus 12. It will be mentioned later. VH and VL can represent V's first 22 significant bits, which will lead to 1 bit precision loss. The detail of the numerical analysis of this method is in our paper. For the computation of this method, we represent two FP32 values, A and B, by AH, AL, BH, and BL. For multiplication, A times B equals AH plus AL times BH plus BL. Directed computing will lead to FP16 add which will hurt the accuracy. So we compute A times B with AH times BH, AH times BL, AL times BH, and AL times BL. This computation only contains FP16 multiplication and FP32 accumulation. The accuracy is guaranteed by the hardware. We use full FP16 multiplication to emulate one FP32 multiplication. Because FP16 has a peak performance of 312 TFLOPs on NVIDIA A100, this method can achieve 78 TFLOPs peak performance, which is higher than 19.5 TFLOPs provided by FP32 on CUDA core. This approach is proposed by MarkDays in IPDPS 2018, but this method is limited by its narrow representation range. For example, for such a FP32 value V, which is within the FP16 representation range, you can see the exponent is minus 10. For this value, VH is OK, directly converted from FP32 to FP16. But the value of VL has an exponent of minus 22. This value is out of FP16's range. When converting to FP16, it will fall back to a subnormal number, which will hurt VL's accuracy. We can see VL lost the extra 8 bits of accuracy in this case. By analysis, the range of this method is from 0.25 to 64,000. This means that if the value is from 0 to 0.25, it cannot guarantee the accuracy. This limits the usage of this method. You can see our paper for detailed proof of the range. So, is it possible to fix it and enlarge the representation range in this case? Yes, we can. In fact, the major problem is the exponent bits of VL. VL will first overflow when the value is lower than 0.25. To guarantee the precision, VH and VL should both within FP16's range. As we mentioned, the exponent bit of VL is VH minus 12, so we can shift VL by 12. It's equal to VL times 4096. Okay, after that, V equals to VH plus VL divided by 4096. And the computation will also be shifted. We call this simulation method FP32F. After that, in the same case, VL will not exceed FP16's range and won't introduce accuracy loss. 
So this method can manage a larger range. For detailed proof, please refer the paper. Besides range, precision is another important problem. The computation may also introduce accuracy loss. So we have to analyze what happened when computing emulated A times B. For AH, AL, BH, and BL, they have 10 significant bits and an encoding leading one. Compared to AH times BH, the result of AH times BL and AL times BH will be shifted by 12, and AL times BL will be shifted by 24. Considering that FP32 has 23 significant bits and a leading one, the 24-bit shifted AL times BL will not affect the final result. So we have an opportunity to reduce the computation. We can skip the unnecessary computation and use only three FP16 multiplication to emulate a FP32 computation. Because FP16 has a peak performance of 312 teflops on A100, FP32F can achieve 104 teflops and 1.3 speed up compared to the existing approach. Are there more opportunities to use other types for emulation? Besides FP16, A100 also supports TF32 and BF16. TF32 has 8 exponent bits and 10 significant bits with 156 teflops peak performance. BF16 has 8 exponent bits and 7 significant bits with 312 teflops. These types provide a range similar to FP32, but with lower precision. So we can use these types and propose emulated data types with a larger range. As a result, we propose TF32 emulated FP32, which we call it FP32T, and BF16 emulated FP32, which, which we call FP32B. The T-type uses two TF32 to represent an FP32 with 8 bytes. It has a range that's similar to FP32 with 52 TFLOPs. The emulation and computation are similar to the F-type. You can refer to the paper for more details. We'll focus on FP32B here. FP32B represents FP32 value V with three BF16 numbers. VH, VM, and VL. We also use exponent shifting technique in this type. So B type has a similar range compared to FP32. Because 3BF16 has more significant bits, B type has no precision loss during emulation. You can find the detailed implementation in our paper. The computation for emulate A times B with FP32B uses nine multiplications. Three of them can be skipped. So we use six BF16 multiplication to emulate a FP32 multiplication. BF16 has a peak performance of 312 TFLOPs. So FP32B will achieve 52 TFLOPs. Here is a comparison of floating point emulations to address the goal of emulating high bitwidth data types with low bitwidth data types. Previous work tried to use two FP16 to emulate an FP32, but this approach is limited by its narrow range. Through in-depth numerical analysis, we propose FP32F, which can not only enlarge the representation range, but achieve higher performance without hurting accuracy. Moreover, we extend the emulation method with different native data types and propose FP32T and FP32B. These types have a larger range and high performance compared to FP32. In addition, in the emulator, we discussed uh, how to emulate integer types and the computation supported by our emulation methods. Our method can support all the FMA-based computations, including common operators such as GEM and convolution. Please refer to the paper for more details. The second challenge is how to select a proper data type for a specific application. 
Given a specific computation, we have some candidate types, including native FP32, FP32F, 32T, and FP32B. They have similar precision and various range. But if the data is out of FP16's range, and we use FP32F to compute it, overflow will occur. In this case, we have to use FP32B or FP32T. So for specific data, we have to choose a proper data type to avoid overflow. Using FP32B for all the computation can avoid overflow, but FP32F has higher performance. Can we hybrid different emulated data types in the same application to achieve higher performance without overflow? Here are the two major issues. One is that we have to guarantee no overflow happened. The other is using FP32F as much as possible. To solve this problem, we should know about where does overflow occur. On tensor core, the input is low bit width data types, but the immediate result is high bit width. So if the original high bit width computation does not overflow, the emulated computation will not overflow. So overflow only occurs in data type conversion. This feature is guaranteed by the hardware. The key is that the multiplication result must be high bit width. Many DSAs, such as Tensor Core or Huawei Ascend, can support this feature. So, we can check the input data to decide which type should be used. For different types, they have various representation range. For example, FP32F have an FP16 range, FP32B and native FP32 have an FP32 range. They have only little difference between the types on the boundary. So we can dynamically select the proper data type according to the input value. For a given application, if the data is within the FP16 range, we can use FP32F for computation. If the data has to use the FP32 range, it should use FP32B for computation. For computations with different requirements for inputs, we have to use the larger type to guarantee no overflow happens. But only dynamic selecting is not enough. For example, real-world data has patterns. For such a matrix, most of the values are within FP16's range, but some of them are out of FP16's range and have to use FP32B for computation. Should we use FP32B for the whole data? I don't think so. We can use a fine-grained strategy by partitioning the data and select the data type for each block. We can use more FP32F and achieve higher performance. So we propose our fine-grained block-wise hybrid computation. We take GEM as an example. We first partition matrix A, B into blocks and scan the values for each block. Then for each computation block, we will select a proper emulation method after that, the kernel will handle the computation strategy. To our regret, we cannot use a blockwise strategy in all the cases because fine-grained kernels are not as that efficient enough. Compared to a dedicated strategy, in practice, if the proportion of FP32B blocks is over 35%, dedicated FP32B has higher performance. To decide a proper strategy, we build a performance model to predict the running time for various strategies with different proportions. Our system will choose a strategy with the highest performance according to the model. You can refer to the paper for the details of the performance model. Combining the above contributions, we propose our system, APE. APE is implemented as a Blast-like library supporting various DSAs including NVIDIA Tensor Core and Huawei ASIN. Users can replace their GEM API with APE's API. APE will scan the input data and automatically choose a proper strategy. We evaluate APE on NVIDIA GPUs and Huawei ASIN. We mainly show the performance results and the capability of APE in these slides. For more details of precision, range, and performance, please refer to the paper. 
We evaluate the end-to-end -end performance on various applications, including quantum circuit simulation, PCA, KNN, K-means, and BERT. Compared to CUDA core on the same GPU, APE can achieve up to 1.78 times speed up on NVIDIA A100. On Gen, compared to CUDA core, FP32F and FP32B can achieve 3.12 times and 1.85 times speed up, respectively, on NVIDIA A100. APE can also support emulating integer types on Tensor Core and Huawei ASIN. Verify that our approach can be used on various DSAs. Moreover, APE's simulation method can support convolution. In the kernels of ResNet 18, APE can optimize some of them. In this work, we propose APE, a blast-like library using low bitwidth data type to emulate high bitwidth computation on various DSAs. Our emulator can provide different emulated data types with larger range, higher precision, and higher performance. An APE can dynamically select data type with a fine granularity and automatically choose a proper strategy. The evaluation shows that our system can boost JAM by up to 3.12 times and accelerate various applications by up to 1.78 on NVIDIA A100. Here is the reference of this slide. Thank you very much.